early 2020, New York City became the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic and many sick patients overwhelmed hospitals. As much of the world's citizens distanced themselves from others to help stop the spread of COVID-19, my next guest headed straight to the front lines. He's a physician who does not live in the New York City area, but made it a priority to fly to New York to take care of those who were infected. Here's the story of why he flies. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Well, as you know, I am always interviewing different people for stories on why people travel. What is the reason why someone gets on an airplane? And as you know, I've been talking to many people who are extremely frequent flyers. Well, I've got another one today, another Delta Diamond Medallion flyer who is a physician. Now, you may wonder if he's a physician, how can he have the time to fly to get to the level of Diamond Medallion on Delta Airlines? Well, I'm going to let him tell you that story, and you're going to be quite Quite interested in what he does and why he flies. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome Dr. Nicholas Bremer to my channel today. Nicholas, how are you? Oh, just fine. And uh, thanks so much for the uh, kind invitation, Peter. I'm looking forward to speaking with you today. Definitely. Yep. It's great to uh, have a physician here to tell your specific story on why you fly. Tell us first, where are you based out of? Um, I'm currently actually in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, and uh, I've been here for, I'd say, four months now. And uh, I could say it's a great place to be. If you're thinking about coming, come on down. Yeah, I definitely like it there. I was down there just uh, prior to the pandemic. My last flight was to JAX. And then my flying kind of just uh, diminished for quite some time. But I understand that your flying has actually uh, picked up or continued uh, during the pandemic, but you say you've been in Jacksonville for only four months. So obviously you do travel a bit. Uh, for what reasons uh, over your career, over the last uh, several years, did you fly? Well, um, flying kind of picked up. Uh, yeah, so I'm an anesthesiologist and um, I'm also trained in interventional pain medicine. So I do uh, a lot of uh, kind of professional work um, whether it be speaking or consulting, uh, you know, teaching you know, various courses. Um, and, uh, so, you know, I travel fairly frequently for that. Um, in fact, uh, you know, prior to the pandemic, I was out of town pretty much for, you know, 13 weekends. Um, I was out of town, you know, up until March, pretty much every weekend doing something. So yeah, fairly busy with that. Um, and interestingly, when, uh, of course, March came and the pandemic hit, um, I actually got a call from my home program and asked if I was interested in, you know, coming back to, you know, do, you know, help out in the ICU, you know, do, uh, you know, practice COVID critical care. Um, and so that's how <laughs> it, it kind of just kept going, uh, you know, during the pandemic. Was that in, in New York City? In in Manhattan, yeah. So, so I actually trained at NYU, um, and uh, that's uh, you know I went back to actually to uh, Bellevue Hospital, which um, you know you'll know is kind of the, the major referral center for you know HHC. So I actually did you know a good portion of residency there, so so knew it quite well, um, and so that's uh, and so that's where I was for essentially. You know, it was supposed to be two weeks turned into four weeks, turned into, you know, two months, three months, four months. I think, you know, we were there for probably four or five months. So was 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 quite the experience. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah. Tough times uh, that you were going into. So like I said, my last flight was to where you are right now. Then the pandemic hit. Um, I flew back to New York City where I live. And I hit the cancel button on many, many, many flights that I had booked, uh, wondering, well, how am I going to be maintain my, maintaining my diamond status? At what point did you come up to New York? It was essentially, I think, um, either the end of March the big, or very beginning of April. And it was, a, uh, it was interesting because I actually flew Delta. Um, you know, at the time, I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. You know, you get to New York, you have to sign some, you know, paperwork or kind of whatever. And so, uh, was able to to fly Delta. And at that time, they were actually giving out. I remember uh, little baggies that had Purell inside and and everything. So, so even then, Delta actually took it quite seriously, and I was actually quite impressed. 
of course you can't do this type of work, you know, seven days a week, you know, 30 days a month forever. So during the uh, times that I would have off, I would actually fly Delta and go, you know, to other places, you know, you know see my family and, and whatnot. So um, Delta was actually quite helpful during the, the pandemic for me. So your initial flight up to New York City, you were flying just around, I'd say, the time when Delta was creating their Delta Care Standard, correct? Was it in place? I think it was right around then. Mm-hmm. Right around then. And uh, were they doing the seat blocking at that particular point? You know, I don't remember. I think I was probably upgraded. Um, around that that period of time, you know, travel really kind of dropped off. Oh, yeah. So uh, flights were yeah, fairly empty. Mm-hmm. I would imagine I was probably upgraded and probably didn't pay too much attention either way. <laughs> well, even if you're upgraded to first class, they are blocking the seat next to you. So you do yeah. have that leisure, um, not just the leisure of having an empty seat next to you, but the confidence of knowing that you're not going to be sitting next to somebody else who could potentially be infected. I know that's one major reason why I flew Delta uh, only twice so far during the pandemic, but uh, the Delta care standard and the measures that Delta took uh, throughout the pandemic were a fantastic reason to fly them. Um, And you mentioned that you actually did leave New York City uh, during the pandemic, just to return uh, on Monday, correct? Right. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, I'll, I'll fly home for whether it be my wife's birthday or, you know, whatever. Um, and it, you know, it, I would fly Delta, and uh, it, you know, just really impressed with the overall, um, you know, how seriously they they took it. And you know, at the time, of course, not a lot of people were flying, so just hats off to everyone who, you know, heeded the warnings you know, uh, practice social distancing, minimize, you know, unnecessary travel. Of course, I was uh, traveling for more or less essential uh, work, but, uh, you know, it was, it was still, you know, you weren't sure if you're doing the right thing or not. Yeah, nobody knew at that particular point. So it's it's quite interesting how you, you did come to New York. And a lot of us were really afraid to just be on an airplane. But look at you, you're going right into the heart of it, into the ICUs and doing uh, all of the work right on top of the COVID patients. So thank you very much for your service. Well, thanks for recognizing that. It, 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 at the time, we really didn't know what this was. Um, this was an emerging pathogen, probably the most important uh, special pathogen of our time in, in terms of emerging diseases. Um, and we really didn't know what the mortality rate was. There were, you know, at the time there was conflicting data. Um, and so, you know, it, it was stressful, but, but at the same time, it was one of those things where, you, you know, if you're not going to do it, who's going to do it? You know, if you're well-trained enough, you're you know, in a uh, age group that may not be so affected. So, um, was quite the experience, but uh, it, it really an honor, kind of like the honor of a lifetime, to to, to be in, in, sort of involved in this in this process in such you know really an intimate way. Um, so, absolutely, it's people like you that the New Yorkers really appreciate, and you've saved many of us. So again, thank you very much. When you were done going onto the airplane, you probably almost fend, felt a sense of relief to go on an airplane to get out of that environment, <laughs> unlike most of us where we just didn't want to be in the closed space, correct? <laughs> yeah, it, it was, um, it was really a sense of, you know, it's something that you miss, you, you know, you miss, you know, the experience of travel, the ability to, you know, turn off and look out the window, to not be on the phone, to not be tied to a screen, to be able to, you know, go somewhere, just the whole experience you miss. And, you know, it is, you know, even if you go away for just a weekend, the uh, travel experience is really a large part of, um, you know, th- that trip. So for me, you know, the travel is as enjoyable as the uh, destination. So was was definitely a, a breath of fresh air. I'm in the same boat as you, well, same plane, I should say, as you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel exactly the same, uh, you know, get just uh, getting on the airplane. All right, I've arrived. I'm happy. Now, did you fly enough? Um, now, Delta, of course, extended everybody's status um, in 2020 to 2021. Were you able to fly enough to actually get to any level of status yourself on your own in the year 2020, since you did quite a bit of flying? Yeah, I think. Actually- or did you not care because. It was extended already, so I don't even bother. You didn't bother to look. 
<laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I wouldn't have you know, traveled specifically to meet a, you know, endpoint in terms of elite status or, or anything like that. But I think um, my existing travel in and of itself, like, you know, it, it would have earned a, a platinum a medallion status. Uh, but, you know, that you know, in terms of MQM, I was kind of you know, sort of well beyond, but then the MQD would be less. So, you know, I, I had platinum, um, but of course they extended it. So you got diamond again anyway. So that was nice. Do you see yourself flying a lot in the following year or in the next several months? Well, being someone who was kind of fortunate enough to have the vaccine, I actually had, you know, I contracted, uh, you know, COVID when I was in New York, but that isn't anything that pretty much no physician or no nurse or no, uh, ans- you know, anyone, you know, who was involved in, you know, COVID ICU um, was, was immune from right. the virus. It's just so infectious. So, uh, so I had it natively, which was a very mild disease for me, fortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, it had antibodies, but, you know, CDC recommendation is to still get the, the mRNA vaccine, notwithstanding, you know, any, any prior history um, of experience with, with the virus. So, so went ahead and got that, which was an absolutely miserable experience because I had the worst side effects, all the side effects you could possibly imagine. Right. But uh, anyway, so, so, you know, fortunately now I do have the vaccine. I'm able to travel and it's just going to be a question of, you know, our destination is going to open up or, you know, are the internet our international, you know, uh, a destination is going to open up and, you know, I, so far this year, you know, we took a nice ski trip to Salt Lake city, w- which was amazing. Delta flying the 767, uh, you know, the 764 actually, which we got on both ways, which was nice with the new Delta one, um, you know, the, those types of things. So you know, looking for those types of opportunities and uh, just as someone who loves to travel both, both personally and also is used to traveling professionally, it's, it's just, you know, you, you kind of have an itch to get out there. So I'll be looking for opportunities. Definitely. So you mentioned flying on the, the 767. Uh, as you probably know, Delta is starting to put a lot of those wide body aircraft on domestic routes. So you have that opportunity. Let's talk airplanes a little bit. What kind of airplanes do you like to fly in on the Delta fleet or any airplanes at all? Um, you know, what kind of seats do you get? Um, what is your preferred aisle window? Talk about that a little bit. So I used to actually be a flight surgeon in the Navy. So I like flying, you know, small aircraft that are more nimble and can do more, more things. And I essentially flown in pretty much every you know, aircraft, uh, flown or flown in just about every aircraft in the Navy inventory. So you know, my preference is for, you know, the 757 is hard to beat. I mean, that, that plane is so overpowered. It can climb to 35,000 feet on a single. I mean, literally you're at like 30 degrees and you're just going all the way up and you know, it just doesn't stop and it, you know, it gets you where you want to be. It's so reliable. It's the old workhorse. It looks beautiful. I mean, it's just like that, that old flying pencil adage. So, I mean, really that's, you know, if I can get on a, a 757 now, you know, I'm going to book that all day long. And then of course, you know, you look for the wide bodies. If, if you have, you know, that type of route um, in the wide bodies, you know, the A3, uh, the A350, if you can get on it, you know, international route, I mean, that's kind of hard to beat, you know, a little cabin altitude and everything. Um, you know, the triple sevens, you know, they, they also installed the new Delta one and it was, some people would say it was a better version of Delta one in there. So it was kind of uh, sad to see those go, but uh, on, yeah. mm-hmm. so those are, those are kind of my thoughts. I try to stay away from regional jets if I can, just cause I'm taller and it's, it's a little bit more difficult to fit in those seats. Personally, I'm a window seat guy. I know that's going to go against probably 90% of the frequent flyer community who likes to have you know, access thing up. But personally, sometimes I like to sleep. I like the window up. I like it down. I don't like to be bothered. I have my computer up. I don't want anyone you know, bumping into me and you know, knocking my, my drinks over in the aisle or whatever. So um, window all the way. Oh yeah. I'm the same way. I don't think I've ever flown uh, outside of uh, having a window seat on every <laughs> single flight I've taken. I just won't take it. I'll take next flight. Sorry. Can't, do, I can't deal with it. <laughs> uh, and you mentioned the 757, you probably get a lot of those uh, going up to Atlanta. I, and I don't know why, but we have, you know, one point we're you know, flying 11, you know, seven, sevens a day, you know, just from, from Jack's to Atlanta. Uh, and never mind all the other flights, all the other destinations that they serve. So, I, I mean, for me, that that's just the best. I mean, you 
walk in, you make a left and, you know, they have that little uh, Delta Comfort, you know, act, you know, area. And then they have the, uh, you know, five or six rows of first class. So that's just the way to go. It's always a special feeling to board an airplane and turn left. <laughs> yeah, we actually don't have many 757s left in the New York area, so I almost never fly on them. And my trip to Jacksonville was actually on a regional jet down there from, <laughs> from LaGuardia, both ways. But it was fine. I got my window seat, so I was happy. Um, and do you go to Atlanta a lot to connect, just living in uh, in Jacksonville, which is not a hub airport? Right. Um, yeah, so... So it's Atlanta for us, which is a 30 minute flight most of the time. Sometimes it could be an hour or even longer sometimes, just depending on traffic and weather and everything else. But yeah, it's such a short flight, so convenient. For me, it's almost the same as a direct flight. It's, you know, if you're flying to Dallas, sometimes I'm tempted, like a couple of weekends ago, I did uh, fly American, I know. But, you know, but it was a direct flight. Hard to say no to a direct flight. But that was also because I was traveling with a colleague. Um, if it were me and I'm traveling alone, I, I have no problem connecting to Atlanta. It's so uh, the, it, it's so smooth. I like the restaurants. I like the lounge. It's just the experience there is great. I know it well. I know the city well. So it's no problem there. You know, uh, we also uh, fly from Jacksonville to New York uh, quite a bit. You know, outside of the pandemic and also other places, Raleigh. And so you know, there is quite a network out of Jacksonville actually into um, I think Detroit and also Minneapolis. So you know, there are a few connections that we had, but by and large, it's all Atlanta. And you mentioned you flew on American Airlines to Dallas. Makes sense going to Dallas at their hub. What was that experience like during the pandemic? Would you? Well, there's no, I mean, they do offer more in terms of, I guess, in-flight services. You know, you get kind of drinks and, you know, snacks and, kind of, you know, other kind of real uh, sort of food. But I mean, really, it's, their boarding process is, you know, nothing like Delta. It's really um, Mac, you know, it's just kind of like people going everywhere. People are kind of unsure what to do. There's so many zones. Um, I actually matched into executive platinum on American just to kind of check it out. Um, um, it wasn't a bad experience uh, by any means. You, you, you have a little bit more anxiety in terms of if you're going to actually get there <laughs> just because of the cancellation. Sometimes my flight was actually canceled. I had to be rebooked. It was actually a little bit of a disaster. So, um, so interestingly on the way there, we actually ended up switching to Delta <laughs> because our flight got canceled there on the way back. We, we flew American. So. so you saw Atlanta airport. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I really love Delta's new boarding process. Um, it actually, you know, they, they board obviously from the rear forward. And if you are a diamond or in the first class cabin, you are invited to board before everybody else. Uh, and I actually chose to board at the very end and it felt very exclusive to me. Uh, instead of just sitting there watching everybody walk into the airplane, they're looking at you, you're looking at them. Kind of like just being the last one on board, door closed and we're off. It was a unique. You know, experience. that's that's how um, some of the, the uh, Middle Eastern airlines for their premium cabin is. Mm -hmm. You know, you wait in the lounge until uh, the boarding uh, details are taken care of, and then you're you're essentially summoned right before the door is going to close, and then you just get on the door closes and you go. Which I would actually much prefer than sitting on the plane for half an hour, forty five minutes. I mean, think about a seven. seven there's you know forty five rows <laughs> of folks that are, that are trying to go single aisle down. I mean, it could it, take a solid half hour to board. So you're just I sitting there. I would much rather just be, you know, relaxing. One of those wide bodies 45 minutes early. And yeah, I'm the guy standing there because I want to be the first one on, but my thoughts have completely changed during the pandemic. So I kind of like being last. Great. All right, doctor. So is there anything else that you'd like to uh, specifically talk about before we end our call today? Well, I just wanted to, uh, point out that I think that, you know, Delta has done a great job during the pandemic. I'm extremely happy with the way Delta's you know, performed during this, this whole pandemic and, uh, you know, look forward to, to getting on some more flights, you know, in the, in the near future. Hopefully my services in the COVID ICU are going to diminish and this pandemic will be behind us all before, uh, before we know it. But in the meantime, just stay as safe as you can. Definitely, yes. Um, we'd love to have you back in New York City, but for different reasons, of course. <laughs> Maybe for a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> 
Great. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate that that was interesting. And again, thank you so much for everything that you've done for the city of New York during the pandemic. We all appreciate your work. And to all my viewers out there, thank you very much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell button so that you're alerted as to any time I post something new. And if you'd like to be featured on this channel, just leave a comment in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to talk to you. Thank you.